Hello and welcome. It's been, I don't even know, let's see, how long since this one? Published dates. April 13th, it's been 16 days since I watched any of these uh, Malcolm Bendel lectures. So, <clears throat> we're on, we were on, we finished 11B. I just now unpublished unlisted my last three ones my last three recordings that were public they're all in a the first one i'm going to leave public the rest of them are all in the playlist that's public on my page as well as linked on the first one so i don't just have a bunch of them because this is a lot of videos <clears throat> so i'm going to publish this one publicly it's going to be public again and then i'm going to do the same thing i was doing where i just unlisted sooner or later so anyway without further ado let's go ahead and get into this Pew, it's time baby also the reason uh, perhaps that I, this came to mind is because malcolm bendel's on twitter now i saw some posts related to uh people's opinions thereof and i was like you know i, had, I never finished that i mean it's a lot the reason is it's an hour, 20 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes. So I guess it's not that much. I guess I only have three, three and a half hours. I, I must have, in my mind, thought I still had these two as well. Okay, so we got about three and a half hours, which is probably going to take me about six hours of video. I was getting about 30 minutes per hour plus of video. So let's go ahead, speed this up also. Hopefully I can remember the topics enough. I just remember that I was not convinced, but also not not convinced. Like, it, you know, that's which is a good sign because I was several hours into him talking and I wasn't unconvinced, so that's good. Hello, I'm Malcolm Bendel. This is section 12 of 15 sections and in this section we'll be talking about the holy grail of science now manifest model of the elements msat plasmoid tech so basically both einstein and nikola tesla identified that the person who discovered the unification model that is reconciled all things with all things and as the sanskrit text says when msat plasmoids are discovered everything novel is known and nothing remains unknown the model of the elements is the holy grail of science because in our normal periodic table, there is no relationship scientifically between the grouping of the elements other than they're grouped by character, whereas they're not grouped. This I'm not very persuaded by, just because I'm like, where, where's iron? Where's the, there's certainly elements not on here. It's a little confusing they're not on here. grouping of the elements other than they're grouped by character whereas they're not grouped on their frequency planes and you can't identify the position of an element on the frequency plane not that if they were there i'd be convinced i think there's also fundamental issues with like where certain where like the zero is where this is certain aspects that I can't remember why I felt that I didn't quite agree with just the arrangement even if it was the case and also just the way it's arranged like it looks cool but I think it's more spiraled more of like a phi ratio or something type spiral that along the way has blocks that are regular I don't know but this it seems a little too numerologically based uh alone anyway where is it not grouped i don't want to hold that against them like it, this two don't seem related like in truth like they kind of seem like sure in his mind he's drawing off of it but i don't see like the technical reason for that like if that periodic table were to be untrue why that would fundamentally influence what he's saying about the inventions so I kind of view them as two separate topics that he's simultaneously talking about. You can't 
identify the position of an element on the frequency plane that is an imploded sphere, pi sphere, which has a Fibonacci curve. And actually, uh, for the base elements, you have eight planes, 16 points on each spiral. And complete each 360 degrees of the Fibonacci curve spiral, or it should more accurately the Sanskrit curve, because it did predate Fibonacci, the knowledge, nothing new under the sun, and we stand on the shoulders of giants. We'll go straight on to the basis of the model. Sorry, guys, that was, I didn't realize now, I was muted. Before we start, I don't know if what I last said was muted. The which finishes off the last section is the fact that whether you're in Mexico, 2650 BC, Egypt, 3150 BC, or Indonesia, 2850 BC, there's one very obvious thing with these structures. Uh, one obvious thing is you have set pyramids. But the second obvious thing is that you have the concept of a small door, a small door, and a central big door. And the same in Egypt, same concept. And in Indonesia, same concept. Now, obviously, this predates the Christian churches, but the Christian churches also have the same three doors. And usually these two doors are closed or bricked in so deliberately so you can see the concept that, yes, there are three doors there, only one's accessible and the other two are closed. And that is what we described before with the infinity symbol making up an imploded sphere, which makes up a donut, which has then described in the previous section that they, you have two small spheres and a big sphere. That is, or well, the gate that's open, which is your black hole that actually can suck in matter, direct and create direct matter to energy conversion, mainly the protein, and disassemble it, and then obviously eject it as well. This uh, principle, the three doors, really, I believe, the fundamental truth that they were trying to display. And also, the pyramid is, as everyone knows, the Cubes pyramid, there's actually eight sides, there's a crease there, and that crease marks the mirror, mirror images. That's what I'm trying to get in here. That, and here you have mirror images as well. If you take a mirror on these images, you know, you, you'll have the same similar images uh, presented and of course this is a mirror image too the door itself is a mirror image on that one plane but um that heads towards it's important to distinguish the difference between a con man and someone trying and failing like even if this is a failure and not true i don't think he's a con man con man implies intent uh, to deceive, like an actual intent to deceive, that I don't get that feeling from him. I, just listening to him, like the fact that he's pointing at these three doors and being like, hmm, those suggest a large center type system, infinity, like that he's relating it like that is genuine and earnest. Like a con man is not doing that. I would say. So at most, he like in terms of the worst case scenario, he's just wrong in a mistaken kind of way and not in a um, con man kind of way. So I don't think it's appropriate to interpret him as a con man. <clears throat> or I'm not to say he's mistaken either, because I don't really know at this point. I really, I want to be more open, honestly. I think I went into it as expecting to just be quickly able to be like, to dismiss it, basically. And I haven't arrived at that. So it's probably a good time to just kind of be open and truly try to understand what he's saying in the in the truest sense, rather than like a mocking like, if someone reads the Bible, if they go into reading the Bible and they already assume it has nothing of value, they will find nothing of value. And then they'll, but they, what they will find is to, of value to them will be like reasons to not consider what is being said and try to find the truth within it. They'll just be like, this says something I disagree with. So, and then like quoted and bring it into arguments and debates they're having with people and it's just like using that as a defense to actually like looking openly so um i feel like i was that way until i discovered the theory of everything based on classical mechanics and newton paved the way for me to really look into scripture and prophecy and I just, from that moment forward, openly read the Bible and immediately it resonated. It literally took that, though.
so maybe I should be more on that side of things. I don't want to be on that side of things, assuming it to be true. With it because then I like open the door for falsehoods to come in. Like it's it's certainly not the the Bible, and the, <laughs> we're not we're looking at someone's personal work, so it's not, not the same as scope or scale of uh, the Bible. So it's, it's a little different circumstances, but it's still the same general thing going on. Where I'm going to try to consider better. The center where hydrogen sits, and the other elements are sitting on the other on the outside spheres that are created by imploding the circle, which will be shown on the next slide. Here's the concept. There's an imploding sphere, imploded sphere. You have a zero point on the equatorial plane of event horizon. Event horizon is quantum physics because basically the whole concept of quantum entanglement comes from the zero point where there is no time space. So therefore, it means that if you don't have frequency, you don't have time space. Therefore, everything is in one point. It's the paradox of the 24 hour, zero hour paradox, the 30, 360 degree, zero degree paradox. When you have everything, you have nothing. Yep. And when you have nothing, you have everything. So again, the zero point being the interchange, it's got a uh, one side it would have a black hole sucking everything in, and the other side it has the capacity to throw everything out. This is. I was muted. I said, and when you have nothing, what do you have then? It's deep, brah. It's deep. And that's what I said. Okay. Self contained electromagnetic field uniquely created by the geometry, and that's why people have to understand that the reason that uh, the understanding, the base understanding of geometry needs to be established before one can even attempt to understand what a plasmoid is and how the universe functions, sacred geometry. So next, okay, here we have a collapse sphere. We've collapsed the sphere, the North Pole and South Pole are now on the equatorial plane. You know, again, you've got the mirror image in this dimension, the mirror image in this dimension X, Y, Z. It's a mirror image, a mirror plane in all directions, and the zero point is here, and everything spirals out. In energy spirals out, follows this, this, um, the calendar effect follows. Anything flowing out from here will follow this around. And come straight back into the center. And that's the basis of matter and antimatter, which I'll show you, and the basis of I'm trying not to have feedback from playing without with my speakers for the sound, and I keep muting myself, sorry. I don't know about the collapse sphere is what I was saying. Like, it might just be a sphere missing its top and bottom might be more appropriate. I don't know. Where it's got, like, an eddy that carved the top and bottom out where it didn't collapse it, per se. But uh, maybe it collapsed it, too, as a po possibility. So uh, I don't want to nitpick too much, but just a thought. This is the shape of a plasmoid. So literally, when the cause of all causes is known, that is when the plasmoid is known, its structure is known, its geometry is known, then everything novel is known and nothing remains unknown. Apparently that also applies to the model of the elements. Because then if you know that metric, you can calculate the resonant frequency. If you know the resonant frequency, you can manipulate matter through adjusting the size of this to match the frequency of the element you want to create, which is an interesting concept. Next. So here, it's made up of planes and of course, I didn't quite pick up all that, but that's okay. The center plane here, you see on the model, is, is it's a mirror plane, so all the noble gases line up on this plane because they occur every eighth element, which puts them on this plane. This gives a very simple diagram, but next diagram, we will then, those planes are frequency planes, at octaves, going up in octaves, the same frequency, the same as uh, David's heart laid flat, which we now call a piano, that um, you, know, you have C, C flat, C sharp. So everyone's, you, know, you just apply that to elements, they're all on the same plane. It's worth noting. Maybe let's find it. Let's pull this out. History of the musical scale. Since the octave in Western music is normally divided into 12 equal half steps, the characteristic intervals of the diatonic scale can be constructed upon any one of the 12 pitches. Western music normally divided into 12 equal steps. That doesn't mean the universe functions that way. Just because that's how we we did it doesn't mean that's how the universe does it. That's, that's one thing. That's uh, When we're developing an entire periodic table based on it, it matters.
Otherwise, it doesn't matter, but, I mean, it maybe it matters, but it doesn't matter, like, in a, when playing music, because it's music, so it's more just, like, in entertainment, enjoyment, happiness, having fun, like, those kinds of, like, vibes, things that are not, like, trying to operate a engine, and develop technology based on the music like then it would be more technical in requirements like it would have to be the appropriate scale and then the question of what the scale really is would come into question like i'm pretty sure there's uh, many scales that are like outside of the western scales even like western music let's see Chromatic. This might not be the best page for finding alternative musical scales. Origin of the musical scale. Uh, ta -da. The American Association for the Advancement of Science Melody and the Origin of the Musical Scale. This probably, <clears throat> let's see, I'd like to just somehow find it but without reading. <laughs> uh, in conclusion, it may not be out of place to repeat the thesis that we would not merely with Helmholtz's regard melody as rhythm in time and rhythm and pitch, but also as harmony in sustained notes and see in the history of music, certainly in its early beginnings, possibly also in its subsequent development, not only genius and invention, but also the effect of physical environment. Anyway, let's keep going. Through here, a mirror plane runs through here, it looks identical in that way. It mirror plane running through there, it looks identical. This geometry is important because A, it's the infinity symbol, there's your zero point. With your small gate here uh, that's closed, small gate here that's closed, and a big gate here that's open. So now we've colored those in to show those frequency planes. The gray here is your noble gases that all line up on that plane, including hydrogen in the center. And for example, the green here is ourselves carbon. And you can see that um, all these planes, when you do a Fibonacci curve, which will be the next diagram, you can see that each one of these planes, frequency planes, determines the uh, monad, tri triad, triad, tetrad sequence of the uh, crystal form and also D valences uh, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, which is on the next slide. Basically, you've got the noble gases lined up here on the equatorial plane, and as you see, it's a mirror plane. So This I feel like I've seen elsewhere. Generally speaking, the Fibonacci spiral of the elements. Maybe not this aspect of it. Although it's pretty much just defining what is. The red here occurs on the mirror, red on the opposite side. Purple here is in the mirror on the opposite side. There's a mirror plane running through the center here because everything above here is uh, matter and everything underneath the control plane here is antimatter. The, the bottom side is your your uh, black, black hole, hole, which is effectively, if you want to look at an antimatter attracting matter. That's all. Uh, that's, a, that's a little. That's not really. All right, I'll just. I'll love, maybe. 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 Maybe in some angle of perception. And uh, of course, carbon's tetrad, which we are, which is a uh, uh, tetragonal, which means so uh, cube's the cube, uh, which we put now the um, model elements with a charge plate underneath. So all these elements here are positively charged, all these neg uh, negatively charged, and of course there's a mirror plane here, so this is reflected, and the positive charge is reflected over here with these units, and the negative uh, to the opposite side here with those units. So positioning that 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 geometrically puts the elements on is you know, mapping the elements accurately and mapping the characteristics ac you know, accurately, you can uh, create a triangle to the zero point, which you can, from that, you can calculate the frequency of the element. 
and by taking the area, the square, halving it. Notably, he's doing the bare minimum in that he's just doing the elements. He's not doing the isotopes. He's not accounting for is he's not accounting for isotopes whatsoever. Which, if you're really gonna make a periodic table that's n novel, I don't want to bring my own periodic table into this, but I'm gonna. Periodic table of currents, where I did, I started with, like, the, with hydrogen, so, like, a chamber, so that's a totally different viewpoint, a container that has a current come in that opens space and makes the container, like a hard shell that when a current comes in, it fills the shell and makes a space so that space behaves as a proton but then with enough current it can produce mounds within the chamber that then behave as neutrons and then it just continues from the simplest upward and then it gets kind of complex where like but like it's important though that the isotopes in including isotopes because isotopes matter it's really accounts for the entirety of the elements it doesn't ignore the isotopes um and it shows like these these amounts of of neutrons form stable structures of neutrons that like if there's a cross current going across the main channel to over to the other side it's splitting down here but it's going generally across generally across then it has a symmetry symmetry asymmetry and it's only this one although at times it happens these two are asymmetrical but they repeat but as, as we go on that doesn't happen it only happens early on and then after that we basically only see repeats of the same structure of the same structure where they're symmetrical symmetrical not symmetrical not repeated not symmetrical not repeated symmetrical symmetrical all repeated all the way down and then I basically like I'm pretty sure that some subtleties start happening where like it comes out this way and maybe this way and changes its like method of growth in a way like probably uh, basically the shortest path like if there's a current coming in here let's say coming in right here flowing across like at some point in order to go from here to over here it's actually easier just to go out and lay aside. So it probably carves a side and starts producing mounds, like one here, one here. But then this direction is kind of further to go to carve through, so it has to go another way and build over here. But at that point, it becomes a little in need of like figuring out. That's why I basically only did 20 elements. Admittedly, I didn't do the whole periodic table. His maybe you can insert the other elements that he didn't do much more easily than I can, but it, like he's not accounting for the neutrons whatsoever. I think the neutrons are far more important than they're given credit, and the only reason we disregard them is because they're neutrons and not charged particles, so they seem to just kind of be there. But their being there is what allows for the like if they weren't there they wouldn't provide backstops for eddies to swirl against and would basically lead to the eddies breaking the boundary and no longer being a container so like the neutrons stabilize the structure and matter okay i was like please don't be muted the triangle and then reducing it down to its time factors. And the next. This is the so a north this is an example of a triangle. If you take a three, four, five triangle just in its basic elements, not even squared, three, four, five, going back to the very fundamental basics, we've got minus two five nine point two, which is divided by three uh, to find the base is eight six thirty six point four. 
which is interesting because again, 864 is the diameter of the sun in miles. It's also the amount of seconds in a day, 86,400. <coughs> it's also the moon square, which is 2,160 is the diameter of the moon in miles. The moon square is therefore 8,640. So you uh, multiply that number by four is matter, three, four, five, six. And if you multiply that same uh, base number by five, you get 432, which happens to be the radius of the sun. So now the interesting thing is that minus 259.2 is the melting point of hydrogen, which we know is hydrogen is actually, uh, the correct term is protein because hydrogen is a group, not an element. That melting point is critical because it's also the great year 25,920 years. It's also the distance the moon travels in 12 hours because the moon travels 51,840 miles in 24 hours, but in 12 hours it travels 25,920. In, in alien maths or Sanskrit maths, the sequence of the numbers within the number do not matter. Neither does the amplitude if you add a zero, it has no substantial effect. This kind of thing, I, I can only just kind of say, all right, like, it doesn't material, like, if it's right or wrong, I couldn't tell one way or the other, really, besides just being like, <laughs> which, and I don't want to just do that, so, like, maybe there's merit to this, it sounds like there's possibly merit to it, it's just very difficult for me as someone who's not into let's say that kind of like line of analysis that mode of analysis to really grasp it is as significant i guess like it seems i don't want to say coincidental because that sounds a lot like i'd be uh speaking the words of um geologists <laughs> sorry guys sorry to pick on you guys so much sorry but uh like i was just thinking what's like the diameter of the moon let's say 2151 2159 did he say something was the diameter of the moon 2159 maybe twice the diameter but by changing the sequence of these numbers it actually does have an effect the reason i was looking is because i was thinking well in the other videos i certainly picked up on some instances where like these numbers are chosen because they're the numbers that are targeted rather than like exactly the number like distance to sun or diameter of sun, maybe? Um, 865372. I don't know if that number, like maybe said 864 was re related to the diameter of the sun, for instance. Like that kind of thing, where it's not quite. Maybe that one he was relating. 869579. Like, it's certainly close. Which is, you tell you which dimension is, whether it's in one dimension, two dimension, three dimension, four dimension, five dimension, or six dimension. So you take that, the melting point here, number, multiply it by this, gives you the square, and the area of the whole square, divide it by two to get the area of this triangle, which is 44,789.76, which is the area of the right triangle. Now, next, here, frequency music is orange, time is green, light is red, angles are blue, and ether which is permanence in motion, which is a DC current, as opposed to matter, which is permanence at rest. Uh, when there's permanence at rest here, which is matter, is the sun square, representing matter, and uh, hydrogen phase change point, measuring representing... This slide is... what the fuck? I don't want to hate on it, it, just, it doesn't resonate with me whatsoever. This our number. We take that number, divide it by 24 hours to break it down. Is, uh, a complex number which actually combines 864 and 216 so, so the first number is a combination of the diameter of the moon and the diameter of the sun now you divide that by 60 minutes and miraculously you get 31104 which is the thing i mentioned earlier is that the uh, six days hydrogen phase change point measuring representing ether. That's our number. We take that number, divide it by 24 hours to break it down, which is permanence in motion, 
which is a DC current, as opposed to matter, which is permanence at rest. Uh, when there's permanence at rest here, which is matter, is the sun square representing matter, and uh, hydrogen phase change point, with measuring representing ether. That's our number. We take that number, divide it by 24 hours to break it down. Is a uh, a complex number which actually combines 864 and 216. So, so the first number is a combination of the diameter of the moon and the diameter of the sun. Now, you divide that by 60 minutes and miraculously you get 31104, which is, I think I mentioned earlier, is that the uh, six days of creation of the Bible of 518,400 seconds, and that is a, a pyramid, mirror image number. That is 518400 is fundamentally the only number that is a product of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 mirrored image, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now the other mirror number is 8 times 9 times 10 times 10 times 9 times 8 is 518,400. Or looking at the other way, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, 7 represents the spiritual or the ethereal, so it doesn't count on the material plane, so you leave that out. Times 8 times 9 times 10 is 518,400, um, uh, the amount of seconds of the six days of creation. In, in, uh, and it's also, in the Sanskrit, it's the uh, 300, the 311040, is actually 60 times, you divide this by 60, there's your 0.5184. It's uh, the same number in different uh, you know, religions, in different sects. The truth remains the same. Uh, so there's your 518400, which is also the 51.84 angle on the Cheops Pyramid, 5184. And it's also divide that by 60 arc seconds, because again, the 518400 is seconds in the Bible, and arc seconds in the Brahma or time is, is the 311040 number. It's the same number. One is in arc seconds, one is in seconds. Now, divide that by 60 arc seconds, you get 864, and we've seen that number before. It's the diameter of the sun in miles, it's the moon square, and it's the amount of seconds in a day, 86,400. Therefore, proving an intelligent, irrefutable proof of the intelligent design of the universe, that it was not random and, and that everything is consistent and in harmonic resonance with everything else. Now, divide that by 60, you get your 144, which is related to the speed of light, 144,000 uh, miles an hour at the surface of the Earth, and light travels around 7.5 times around the planet in one second, which rectifies time from our point of view, and we'll see that in my calculations. Again, you divide that by 60, it's 24, which is 24 hours in a day, divide 24 by 60, it's 4, divide that by 60, is 166, divide that by 60, you 666, which is 6 protons, 6 electrons, 6 neutrons, which is carbon, which is us, and divide that by 60, you get 111, which is 11.11, which is the phase change of the sun, every 11.11 years, and it flips poles, and so that gives us our metronome, so multiply that by 24, which is time, and you get your uh, 266, which is also 2.66 is the density of every rock in the pyramid, whether it's the limestone, the basalt, or the granite. And they're all picked because they're a resonance of 266, because 266 is the face of the clock, the radius of the clock, which is the, its frequency, is your the ratio of ether to matter. 16 is matter, 12 is ether, it's 1.333. The radius is uh, one years, and it flips poles. And so that gives us our metronome. So multiply that by 24, which is time, and you get your um, 266, which is also 2.66 is the density of every rock in the pyramid, whether it's the limestone, the basalt, or the granite. And they're all picked because they're a resonance of 266, because 266 is the face of the clock, the radius of the clock, which is the, its frequency, is your the ratio of ether to matter. 16 is matter, 12 is ether. It's 1.333. The radius is... Uh, <laughs> See that that's for instance, that's an that's an instance two point seven one, he's saying two point six six, but he's actually not I mean maybe it's um an instance where it's like a focal target that's not met quite exactly kind of thing, but it's it resonates towards but doesn't actually like it's not so simple kind of thing, but acknowledging something that he's talking about, but he's not even acknowledging the differences. To, he's more, he's claiming they're the same. So if I were to just be listening to this and taking it face value, I would interpret that he's, that these numbers he's saying are actually the same in all these instances when they're not really it's just they're similar enough that they and multiple multiples of 10 across <coughs> powers of 10 i guess uh, 1.33 to the diameter which is 266 if you think about it as being a clock so anyway going to here you can see you've got the color coding referring you back to that that frequency of time well, this is ether and time in its first instant is the base of the sun, which is a, a frequency imprinting device, uh, which turns DC 
like to a current like your battery in your car to AC like alternating current current like your alternator in your car. One has frequency, one doesn't. Matter does not have frequency, and that's the base of our technology. Because if you create a zero point with no frequency, matter can't exist. So it goes out of its dimension with no energy in this dimension. In fact, energy ga gained, not energy lost. And it can reconstruct, for example, carbon into oxygen. So basically, here we have the numbers, 0.5184 divided by 7.5, which is, I remember, uh, one second, like goes around the Earth 7.5 times, equals 0 0.06912, which is actually a shuffled number, which is 129,600, which is the resonant frequency energy. Unit. Divide that by your 266, which is the ratio of ether to matter, you actually get, go back to time itself, which is 25,920 years, the precession of the equinox, which gives us all our star signs. And uh, <coughs> each one of those star signs is 2,160 years, which equals the distance the moon travels in one hour. So it's not coincidental. We, it's an intelligent design. There is a God. There has to be. And this is running to a blueprint because it has to. And so things are not random as being presented. They are intelligent design. If you multiply that number by 400, which is at 400, the moon is 400 times less than the diameter of the, the sun, uh, you get divided by 7.5, which is, I remember, uh, one second, like goes around the Earth 7.5 times, equals 0 0.0691. One two, which is actually a shuffled number, which is 129,600, which is the resonant frequency energy. Divide that by your 266, which is the ratio of ether to matter, you actually get, go back to time itself, which is 25,920 years. The precession of the equinox, which gives us all our star signs, and uh, each one of those star signs is 2,160 years, which equals the distance the moon travels in one hour. So it's not coincidental. We, it's an intelligent design. There is a God. There has to be. And this is running to a blueprint because it has to. And so things are not random as being presented. They are intelligent design. If you multiply that number by 400, which is at 400, the moon is 400 times less than the diameter of the, the sun, uh, you get uh, 103. Distance, let's see. Distance, moon travels in a month. Speed of three six eight three. Is that number anywhere up here? It's kind of like double that one. Divide that by 16, you get 6.84. Again, a uh, shuffle. 864, you divide by 400, which is at 400, the moon is 400 times less than the diameter of the, the sun. Uh, you get uh, 10368. Divide that by 16, you get 6.84. Again, a uh, shuffle. 864, you divide that by 22 and a half degrees, which makes up your 16 segments on the circle, and that equals the Q88, which is light itself. So basically, you take 288, which is light itself, divide that by an eighth, and you get 234, which is the mirror number of your 432. If you add up uh, 432 and 234, you get 666. Multiply that by 400. Again, you get 129,000. Divide that by 133, which is the ratio of ether to matter, you get 129,600. Uh, divide that by 1.3, you get 5184. Again, divide that by 1.3. Ether to matter. Three. You get 388, which is in the octave sequence of the planets. Divide that by 1.3, you get 2916. Again, 129,600. As I said, the, uh, it's only the product and the sum of the numbers. And to work out the frequency, you simply take the product and divide it by the sum, and you can reconcile all chemical reactions. So, But anyway, that's just a, um, a quick insight into what you can do with this. And you can see it's a, it's a simple, simple arithmetic equations, but it's uh, demonstrating something that's evaded our society in modern times. Of course, there's nothing new under the sun. Everyone used to know this. When the Sanskrit texts were written, we simply lost that knowledge, and we not lost the knowledge of the even existence of plasmoids up until 1957. We certainly didn't, uh, well, Stanley Meyer created a plasmoid generator, and that was acknowledged by Kenneth Radford Shoulders, and in very real terms, you know, this work is standing on the shoulders of Ken Shoulders. R.I.P. Ken, he uh, passed away in 2013. So here we have an interesting thing. Here's the element spiraling around, and you can see the 22 and a half degree separation on the circle. Uh, here we have another thing is, again, here's your mirror plane, and here's your mirror plane here, and then you've got another mirror plane in this axis. But every element on this side of the model is diamagnetic, which means if you put it in an electromagnetic field, it will align itself at 90 degrees to that field. And that's very important with our technology because this fact is one of the key operating parameters of the Vajra, because what we do with the Vajra is it's fires in quadrature. That is, you have, a say, a negative charge here, Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, I keep meeting myself, and I'm, I'm saying it doesn't really make sense for north and south to be at these poles rather than, like, at the center. Because of just the actual 3D structure of the spiral that he was showing. But, uh, let's just go with it. Okay. I mean, it's interesting. I wonder how accurate this is. He only has this many elements as well. I wonder if it continues to be accurate. If like these are only if these are accurate, I, I don't want to like take. I'll just take his word for it. But I wonder if it continues. Center, and that's important because if you take this, they're firing into this center. Say if you use these metrics here, and of course that is where uh, the face point is, and that is where the zero point is in our model. Now, parabenic, which is all the elements on this side. Not only does it split it up, this model, and this is the base plate for the model, but you're splitting it up into, obviously, your inert gases here, but you've got uh, monad, diad, triad, tetrad, negative, and then, again, tetrad, triad, diad, monad, and you go back to your zero-point plane. So in here, I show that there's mirror images. So, for example, sodium magnesium are here and calcium and potassium. If you look in section two of my... Uh, sorry guys, I just can't mute, I guess. I was saying it doesn't match. At first I, I was thinking it matched, not just taking a cursory look, but then I realized aluminum, it doesn't match. Magnesium, it doesn't match. Boron, it doesn't match. Calcium, it matches. Carbon, it doesn't match. Nitrogen, it doesn't match. No, it doesn't match almost any of them. It literally doesn't match. I don't know what to say about that. My notes, I proved irrefutably uh, through independent scientific testing that I can actually transmute elements in water using chip leachate, a pH of eight to nine. That's a very alkaline solution. And that's because of the presence of uh, uh, ammonia in the water and what those notes show, if you read those notes and that test results, you will see that our technology, using the plasmoid generator and using the thunderstorm machine, will actually regenerate its own fuel directly from the air, directly from the nitrogen in the air. One of the strongest bonds in uh, chemical bonds in uh, nature is, is the nitrogen together, N2, and it takes a lot of energy to break that bond. Normally, more energy than you get out of the recombination of making ammonia, but and the Haber-Bosch mechanism, but with our mechanism, that does that easily because you pull, can easily pull the nitrogen apart, and then you can add the... I am significantly less convinced and persuaded by anything in this, in the periodic table element side of things. Uh, again, it's two different aspects of his work, but I am not convinced. Free oxygen hydrogen from the water. And so that'll be a preferential reaction, and we have the catalyst of stainless steel and the catalyst of the plasmoids. So this is a very. Likely there's interesting things worth noting, like amongst it, but. 
it's not like it. I'm not convinced. That's all. Interesting. Not true. You can see all these uh, the analysis in our uh, in our uh, leachate fluids from a tip which is producing gas. There will not come a day when this replaces the actual present periodic table. Something else will, but not this. That's my that's my interpretation. I mean, if he's literally not actually accurate with the these things of that nature, I mean, like something's missing in the analysis. I mean, maybe maybe it's on the path towards something relevant, but which we actually yeah. were, did the test work on operating a technology with gas, but also with the. Um, that it uh, destroyed the cyanide compounds uh, in the water and also and said it turned it as a liability into an asset because you actually generate fuel from it. So anyway, the next is the holy grail of science. As I said, going back, the risk of repeating myself, Einstein and Tesla said that the man that produced this model would be able to have access to limitless energy. Now, our society is founded on those men. Nikola Tesla, we wouldn't have alternating current, therefore you wouldn't have the alternator in your car, you wouldn't have lights that we have here you wouldn't have this screen you wouldn't have all the technology we have here we wouldn't have the cameras we wouldn't have anything we'd probably be sitting uh, having a few beers around the fire uh, dreaming about the day when we can have light that wasn't from a fire so anyway so here we have the model of the elements so what we've done is you've seen how the elements were arranged and now to put everything on one well it gets a bit mind-boggling here this is the most complicated image in modern times on our planet and you know i don't even know that's been done before but but nothing new under the sun but maybe not this representation in the center here we have the sun, the moon, and the earth, which is the most three critical things to us, and their diameters and their distance to each other is or multiples of 108. The average distance between the sun, which is a diameter in miles of 86,400, and the earth is exactly 108 times the diameter of the sun. The moon, the average distance... The moon He's just choosing the number. Miles, the average distance is 108 times 2000. I hate to summarize when I said more than that, but that's the summary. Pardon me. 160. So therefore, it's perfect geometric design. It is intelligent design. It is absolute irrefutable proof of the creator. So no one can look at these numbers, and that's why they've been hidden, and that's why sacred geometry has been basically thrown into the basket of history, the right waste bin of history, really, in the sense that sacred geometry and, I suppose, the uh, observation and copying of nature uh, was important in the 19th century. Uh, unfortunately, now science has become political and no longer represents nature. It just represents man's foolishness. And I'm quoting from God on that. Um, so basically, here you have hydrogen, which is melting point is minus 259.2, which represents the great year. And that is, uh, everyone knows their star signs, you know, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Libra, Virgo. I'm very interested in that. Um, no one's made these connections in this way because if you actually plot the elements and look at the frequency planes, all of these frequency planes represent star signs. They also represent the precession of time. And when you take, for example, carbon, which we are, we are hydrocarbon, and carbon here you can see on this plane, along with cobalt here, and so, and silica on the other side. And if you take, for example, time, which is plotted here, 24 hours, then carbon is at six hours, which talks to the six planes that make up a cube, which carbon is cubical. If you take time, or the angle, sorry, 360 degrees then, 360 degrees and zero degrees, and just pointing out that the compass and the clock are a paradox. And I'll, I'll explain the paradox. If you have a uh, prism, white light, and you put it through a prism, it splits up, splits up into its component parts, and that's how you split light. It's the same concept here, is that if you have all colours, you have no colours at all. Colours, if you have all colours, you have zero colours. If you have all time, you have zero time. So 24 hours is the same point as zero hours. 360 degrees is the same point as zero degrees. So what is the fundamental truth is that, what it's saying is that if you've got the pyramid go back to the prison if you split up those uh, colors but if as a, as a child in in primary school used to color in a a, uh, a disc with the colors of the rainbow and then put a stick on it and spin it yeah and that when you spin it you see it turns white because when you have every color you have no color when you have all frequencies you have no frequency so this paradox is something that people have to it's not something we were taught it's something that you have to really think about because a lot of stuff in science is just ignored because no one can explain it and it's the magic of science and so the magic is simply things we don't understand 
the, the magic of this is that you can plot all the numbers from light 144 and you go around to carbon and there's the 36 which is just 360 degrees which looks to the ether and that's the frequency if you uh, study i recommend studying the works of well kepler but also the sanskrit text also uh, walter russell that had a very very good grip on this subject and related to that as far as that truth extending into vortices yeah do you know how much sanskrit text there is i recommend studying the sanskrit text that is, that is a pretty broad statement <laughs> victor Schalsberger is a very good reference for that i think that also lord kelvin and jewel did the jewel jewel kelvin curve and from that observation of nature or of just an observation of uh, the interactions of temperature and pressure jewel got to name it was a unit of energy and Kelvin's now a unit of temperature. Anyway, going back to our model, we have able to plot Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, our music and color and monad, diatride, tetrad, form and the form and the frequency go together. As everyone knows, if you have the figures of child and you put a vibration onto a plate of sand on it, it will form different shapes. And that is the connection between frequency and crystal form. That, that it's obvious, it's figures of Chaldi. And the blueprint I'd suggest also with curling photography is very obvious is that if you if you have a leaf and you cut off half the leaf and take a photograph before and after, that the blueprint with which the soul within which the body grows survives, the blueprint that our body grows into is still there and visible with curling photography. Even if you cut your fingers off, they will still be there in curling photography because they are the blueprint. And that's another despicable lie that we don't have a soul. And I think those that identify they don't have a soul possibly don't have a soul. So, but the reality is they can deny it, but actually they were built by the blueprint of the soul. As you go out, soul. It's an interesting concept that if people deny they have a soul, maybe listen to them. Next two slides I'll go over. Number one, a description of the I think everyone's got a soul. Of of this is the black hole here. This is the eye of the universe, the black hole of the universe, the eye of Horus. The center uh, where everything comes from is still permanence at rest, which is a god, a direct current, not alternating current. Matter is alternating current. So now you take a few of the numbers here. We'll go through a lot of these other, as I said, all this, all these represent, we can see the numbers up here. There's, they represent everything knowable that's known. There's nothing on this. Everything we experience in our life, color, sound, crystal form, the actual seasons that we're in are all documented on here. And down here, our current position on the great year is, is 25,920 years, which is interesting because we're now at exactly the point of the frequency of hydrogen. So therefore comes the age of enlightenment as we come into the age of Aquarius. If you want to be enlightened on that point, you can uh, read Roland's book called The Shaman. Anyway, so going back to it, I just want to go over some of these numbers with you. I think the most important sub dudes, that's what I said. The mold in which matter is formed. So basically, the concept is that if you think about it as just being a jar, you can't change the water that's in the jar. What we can do is change the jar. And as it would have it, if say it's a square jar, then and you pour that energy, if you like, into a triangular jar, you've now changed from, say, carbon to nitrogen. Carbon, which is six protons, six electrons, and six protons into nitrogen, which is seven protons, seven electrons, and seven neutrons. So, and then oxygen is eight, 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 eight protons, eight electrons, and eight neutrons. And also... They're not all one to one. Like this one is mostly eight eight eight. But I'm sure her This one's mostly seven seven seven. Okay. Pardon me, sir. Carbon. Carbon isotopes are way more distributed though, right? 89% or 99% so pretty much all
<clears throat> so this is one of those instances where like this number of neutrons these this number of mounds really can support more eddies so even though it has a stable isotope of carbon 14 it can support more eddies with just that amount of neutrons so just more like energy inflow can produce another eddy and then another eddy within the same structure where this is the like the structure that really most of the time this structure has eight eddies it can also have seven or six eddies which are the protons Foundation.earth and also at HowTube and also at RandallCarlson.com, which I demonstrate that the word itself, our language itself, describes the first elements starting from a hydrogen, one, 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 helium, uh, hydrogen, helium, methane, beryllium, boron, carbon, and nitrogen, and fluorine, and then you go to the next noble gas. If you take this, these numbers here, and if you read these, a time is represented by five one eight four hundred. It's the product of equal and opposite uh, vortices, the forces, and here if you divide time itself, 518400 time by the melting point of hydrogen, 259.2. It exactly equals 2000. The reason for that is that Solomon's molten sea is 2000 baths, which is 144,000 hin. Solomon's molten sea was a plasmoid generator used to charge the Ark of the Covenant, which was a capacitor, which has a dielectric, which was shittim wood, which is the last place, by the way, that the Israelites camped out before they crossed into the promised land. It's a bit of history. And if you take 25,920, which is the recession of the equinox, and also the melting point of hydrogen, divided by 7.5, which remember was the Light goes around about 7.5 times. <clears throat> That's an actual question from Malcolm. Why he believes Celsius over Kelvin to be appropriate. In one second, it equals 3456, which is the sun square, which is matter. So the sun itself, the 864, represents ether. I read this uh, post on Instagram. It's like something about being like unable to be a human because you swallow spit and start coughing <laughs> i'm bad at being a human i don't know i still haven't figured out how to, how to do that without coughing like which is correct current permanent address god and permanent emotion is matter which is us and so uh, three four five six the sun square the moon square which is the mirror image of the sun because they're opposite looking at each other and light from the sun hits the moon well the moon square is your eight 8,640, and which is actually represents ether, and then the 216, which is 1,400 of the uh, diameter of the sun, equals the equal and opposite, which is matter in that case. In our section here, we identify that uh, you go 25,920 seconds is 432 minutes. So there you have the relationship between, again, between time and matter. And if you take our 129, 1,600 with just one zero missing 12,960 seconds is exactly 216 minutes. That's the diameter of the moon. And if you take 6,840 seconds, it's exactly 108 minutes. Again, if you multiply this, the diameter of the sun or the diameter of the moon by 108, you get the distance between the sun and the moon. Now, 360 degrees of arc is 21,600 minutes of arc. There again, you've got the 216 number, which is the moon number. If you take 21,600 minutes of arc, uh, that equals 129,600 seconds of arc. Here I'm trying to, that's why time is the mold in which matter is formed, because you see that all the crystal angles, and then why is the 2,160 occurring all the time? You know, here's on our thing here, there's, on our chart, there's 2,160 is one star sign, the time it takes precision equals to go from one star sign to another. Well, and the moon is 2,160. Why? Because we're cubical and a cube. Internal angles is 2,160. The sum of the internal angles of the cube. That's why. So again, it's all intelligent design. And this uh, model of the elements, the reason why it's so important and the reason why you can tap unlimited energy is because knowledge is power. And the scripture says, my people perish through lack of knowledge. And that's what we're doing fairly well. So I think it's, we need to get some knowledge. Well, not so much more knowledge now. There's too much knowledge flying around. There's just not enough wisdom. So let's go to up here to the ether. Well, you've got the 144,000, which represents light. You divide that by 6.666, which is energy, and you get your 216 moon number again. You take the 144,000 divided by 5.555, you get the 25,920 great year. You take the 144,000 divided by 444, which is time, 
and you get the reverse mixed sum number 432, the radius of the sun, you divide it by 3.333, which is matter, that's uh, 43,200. So see what's happened here? You take light, divide by matter, 3D, 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D, so 3D, which is us, 43,200. Well, that's the amount of seconds in a day on the summer solstice. And at night, it's the same, so the equal amount of light and day at the summer solstice. Now, the critical thing about that is that the pyramids are a scale model, 43,200 scale model of the whole planet, which is not a coincidence either. So you can see beyond any doubt, and then when you go down to 144,000 divided the pyramids are truly incredible because they have all those types of things that he just mentioned, but they were they were built on the earth before the earth expanded. So it didn't even have these dimensions. Wrap your fucking head around that, dudes. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Protein's melting point, which is its phase change, which is the some of its turn of angle. And I can give a very simple parable here for people that listen to their kettle. You can hear when your kettle is boiling that that just before it boils, it goes quiet. There's no noise. There's no sound. It goes still. Why? Because the energy has now reached the resonance of that the resonance of that whole body, and now once it's reached the amount of energy to attain that resonance, it changes phase. So it goes from basically starts producing water in its gas phase, and that phase change gives you the exact point at which represents the frequency at which it changes, so hitting that frequency. So you know that frequency, you know the phase change, you can use that number to, as the metric to then rewrite chemistry and physics, which I've done. If you divide that by 259.2, .2, you get the ether 5.555. And if you go to ether, divide 144 by 5.555, you get the great year, which is time. So you see how everything is a perfect interplay. If you divide 144 by 16, which is matter, you get 9,000, which is God's span is nine inches of his hand. So if he created everything, then everything he created is nine divide, divisible by nine and you can see down here all the planetary numbers radius and diameters are all divisible by nine and every number related to sacred geometry always adds up to nine the sun is nine i really don't think he's trying to con anyone i just don't think so unless it's like a big con some crazy big con that's like he's some reptilian or something kind of level con other than that, if he if he's a human being, <laughs> I don't think he's trying to con anyone. <laughs> Whether he's right or wrong, it, again, it does not mean he's trying to con someone. A con man, I, in my interpretation, would be more distinguishable. Like this stuff is not really con man as much as. Like believing numerology and the the power of doing this and the purpose and the benefit of doing this type of analysis that like to not do it is to not account for those kinds of things. So maybe <clears throat> I don't do it. I don't look at it this way. So maybe there's some merit to it that like that spectrum of reality I have personally ignored so it's hard for me to like distinguish right or wrong when he's talking like this from like a fundamental way I know we can just dismiss it him wavingly and be like yeah nah <laughs> but I, I don't feel like it's dismissible it's more just like neutral reaction I don't feel moved by it or like totally be like ah no now kind of thing for the earth nine times 88 is 792 which is 7927 the diameter of the sun oh, sorry the earth and then nine times 44 is three nine like to even understand what he's saying right now would be because of numbers it's hard to really he's just saying numbers over and over you almost have to like memorize every detail so that when he says one of the numbers you can then know that it corresponds to these other numbers elsewhere to then relate it to some other feature and then be able to consciously like relate it on the fly what he's saying and why it might have some relevance across these other parallels that he's drawing but like when he's just saying the numbers even explaining each one it doesn't 
it's just like a string of numbers with some explanation that may or may not be true though because i don't it's hard for me to like recollect the connections across them to like be like aha uh -huh, i get it kind of thing which again i don't do numerology so this is pretty much different language to me kind of stuff i'm not sure this is considered numerology it probably is i don't know why i want to be I guess I could stop recording and I might as well finish. I only got I only got 29 minutes left. <laughs> Made it this far. is the actual key number for time. For several reasons, if you multiply the sun's diameter at 64 by 7.5, and by 7.5 again, you'll see you get a repeat of a shuffling of that number, which gives the dimensional numbers for time. If you take 7.5, and that's, that's a rectifier for time because that's the Earth's diameter. If you take 9 again by 12 is 108. What you've got is the moon itself, the multiples. There, that's the 108 is the radius of the moon. And the frequency of all other elements. That God gave in the earth. It's just smart. And add a little bit more water as being protons and electrons. So it's actually a very simple technology. Next. Again, I was muted. I said, let's just move past the slides that are just the same. I was looking to see if things changed a bit. Okay, let's maybe go back to 1.5. I'll just read this out. The, it's uh, really the MSAT plasmoid unification model. It's a molten sea arc atomic reconstruction technology, MSAT. Plasmoids are donut or toroidal shaped clusters of net protons or net electrons that once captured and placed in toroidal orbit are capable of absorbing, storing, and releasing enormous amounts of energy present within their self generated and structured electromagnetic containment field. Plasmoids, in effect, function as an atomic battery that can be self charging due to its ability to convert matter to available clean energy. Again, the MSAT plasmoids generated in water are life giving, not life taking, and the Vajra is life giving in our cultures around the world. It's always acknowledged as life giving, not life taking. Plasmoids uh, in effect function as atomic battery. I feel like everything has some cost. Like even a even a utopian society, I'm pretty sure it's kind of like, dudes, guys, we're gonna make an agreement now because you guys want to keep fighting. No, let's just agree. Yeah. Yeah, the future is going to have to deal with the fact that we made this agreement. But guess what? We had to deal with the fact that we made the agreement in the past. So let's do it again. Let's do it again and then just replay and go through like the, the golden age. And then at some point, the cost of that way of living that's been like deduced as a way that enables us to be free individually and able to explore the world in our lives as we choose fit without like negative consequences by on one another by mistreatments by just an actual accord struck by things that are like able to raise our vibrations like technologies included and like it's, a, it's not some like oh it's perfect <laughs> he was probably drawing energy that would have gone to the earth it's if some technology is created it would the energy it, it is extracting would have gone to the earth or was like extracted from the earth so it's kind of like at a cost to the earth in some ways unless it's truly designed appropriately which i'm not sure if that's possible because we're pretty much interacting with the earth's fields and like extracting energy so i mean i want to call it just like like he was describing i would say highly unlikely that any technology is anything more than a ponzi scheme that just lasts long enough for people to just be like yeah i guess let's do that <laughs> Like, they're all Ponzi schemes, even, the, like, the greatest of schemes 
is destined to collapse. And they're all pyramid schemes. That's why there's pyramids. It's just like, that's just how it is. That's my thoughts. Plasmoids by the unique geometry cause a consequential electromagnetic containment field to generate a zero point naturally and casually without much effort. Have the ability to convert the nuclear mass of protein atoms into energy. The plasmoid unification model, PAM, posits that. They make the agreement. They're like, they won't know. They won't, even, they won't know that we fucked them over by extracting all this energy from the earth and ruining it. They won't know, dudes. They'll figure it out so far down the road. Who cares? <laughs> and that knowledge of them being hidden in plain sight for, well, centuries, but millennia, really. This palm slide rule represents the algorithmic relationship between life's elements critical to mankind's existence and development. It starts with protein, at which we call hydrogen, which has a melting point of minus 259.2. It's the most abundant element in our solar system. Protein determines the 25,920 great year frequency of our solar system. The resonant frequency of all other elements can be calculated when 25,920 years uh, is reduced from years to days to hours and to seconds. And I would sort of act to that arc seconds if you want to go to what in our society we would call the uh, isotopes of elements. The palm is evidence that... It's worth noting it's the most abundant element in our solar system because we're made of atoms and we're made of the particles that are basically relative to this, the most abundant particle are a little bit bigger usually, also hydrogen, but like that's why it's protium. It's not inherently protium. Like so, there's observers composed of particles other than what we call atoms that would see the same particles but see them differently. But they would see a solar system that they lived in where the like most common and most abundant element is basically what they saw to be one proton. <clears throat> That's my interpretation. Okay. That design is in perfect octave harmonic resonance with itself. Therefore, all creation just throwing that out there. Elements all resonate in unison with the collective chord as above, so below. This is interconnected with the energy web, the 24 components and laws of which are all based and governed on the same 16 sector torus plasmoid precepts shown. Concepts and ruling principles of palm can and have been applied to make energy to matter and matter to energy conversions. When applied to the modern hydrocarbon powered internal combustion engine, palm technology removes exhaust, toxic waste products, and increases the engine power output by transforming waste energy back into fuel. Plasmoids, including, so employed in conduction with the plasmoid, the plasmoid toroidal implosive turbine, which is the Vajra, provide a new novel matter to energy and energy to matter propulsion device for water, land, air, and space travel. So that's a uh, host of that we're reading from there is Strike Foundation Guarantee Limited. You can see it by myself, Malcolm Bendel, and a graphics acknowledged by Steve L. The next. So here's the legend. So we have, as in ours, we have 24 elements that make up our life, the experiences that we have in our solar system. Here you have the sun itself, which creates the warmth and the energy. And of course, our planetary power plant uses the sun as a that energy from the sun uh, directly 24 hours a day you can bring it down safely and uh, there was a recent talk on the Joe Rogan show where they naively and very childishly and very ignorantly uh, talk about Nikola Tesla who founded all the devices we now use including the cameras oh damn he had a laugh he's like what you got a problem with Tesla Joe <laughs> and the lights so statements on the Joe Rogan show that Nikola Tesla It's very human, not reptilian. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> Designs are not real. <laughs> fantasy uh, shows the fact that they Just means it's genuine and not a con man. Reptilian man, that's all I'm saying. Do not know that those ones exist. They do not know their structure. They do not know sacred geometry. They do not envisage a world where there is not a meter between God and humanity. Uh, that the things that God gave on the earth, the oil, belongs to God. Countries and individuals claim them and use guns to fight over those resources, but then they do not belong to individuals. We all are uh, the sons of the Creator, and we're all sons of a common ancestor. The current situation that we're in with this planet is one that is anomalous, simply because Nikola Tesla, when he drove his car from Canada to Miami with seven tuned aerials and a tuned electric motor, he uh, proved the uh, viability of using the ionosphere and the planetary resonance as a source of motive power. Nikola Tesla, of course, you see him with the lightning around his uh, devices. Well, we know now, in just in the last five years, that 
from high-speed photography that in fact plasmoids uh, create the path of lightning they create the ionized path that lightning travels down so it's not inconceivable then that you can connect an ionized path to the ionosphere and therefore be able to draw down the millions of volts and hundred thousands of amps to power the planetary power plant now the other thing about that is that because the plasmoids they're generated in one spot have a common frequency and that is a common imprint sort of like a, a code or a frequency code very complex frequency code but just to simplify it is that they have uh, what's called quantum entanglement that was the word that's used which just means they have a zero point where there's no time space which means plasmoids can share energy with plasmoids that are charged once they're discharged and share that energy it's the use and employment of plasmoids within the system of the planetary power plant which tesla had patents for and uh, using the charging of the planet to directly be able to transmit energy in a way which is not harmful to man because in, in effect plasmoids we are a plasmoid elements are a plasmoid everything's a plasmoid and as i said i'll go back to the sanskrit when the cause of all causes is known everything knowable is known and nothing remains unknown and this is the proof of it so here going, going on music crystal form valences the elements themselves all line up perfectly elemental frequencies are here based on your twenty five thousand nine hundred twenty years uh, the great year the zodiac year the clock the compass matter itself are based on 64 light based on 144 resonant frequency and energy unit which we split up all time which is 518 400 but just the 5184 number the zeros the amplitude doesn't really matter whether it's 51.84 which is the angle of the Kelps pyramid or whether it's a uh, 51,840 the distance the moon travels in 24 hours or whether it's uh, the 508,400 the amount of seconds in the six days of creation and the ether sun is your 864 number your 3456 number is the uh, amount miles in a sun square your dimensions obviously 3d 4 3d is 3.33 4d is 4.44 5d is 5556d is 6.66 just for simplicity i've just dealt with in these lectures with just 5d but in my notes you'll see i've identified 16 dimensions there has to be because there's 16 planes on a 32 which is the radius of the active part there has to be 16 uh, planes and 32 points related to those planes but anyway that's in my notes but these and these numbers people need to remember now sound itself we've got the range the frequency range I'm not persuaded at all by this lecture. Uh, I think it's too focused on the periodic table side of things where, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some aspects, but. Which have also put there. And we've even put language in there, which is quite interesting because you wouldn't think I'd be able to plot language, but I have been able to plot language on this thing. So when I said all things that we experience, including our language is on here. Uh, the solar system, diameters and radii, and plasmoids themselves, which is a 7,200 degrees and zero degrees, which is a 32 plane, 64 radial points and one zero point. And then all plasmoid energy is number 24, which equals all alternating current AC frequencies, non-ionizing and ionizing we've shown on this as well. So this gives you all the metrics that we experience in our solar system. I think we just move on to the next slide, which gives you, going from the planetary power plant, situation that I discussed coming off the model of the elements that the model of the elements gives you the metrics under which you can plot where the elements are but I just wanted to go over some geometry with you this is a concept that hydrogen is smaller and as it grows and you put more like carbon is 666 6, 6, 6, 6 electrons 6 neutrons so but as, it, as the elements grow the zero points grow and the and that is the two outside zero points and as I said the the electrons and protons would uh, spin in so in, in this manner in the same way so infinity symbol spinning in and out of that center point yeah, so that just we'll move on just gives you a bit of geometry related to that and again with different elements sodium magnesium uh, potassium calcium and I, I showed you earlier how that relates to the molecular elements and their diamagnetic and paramagnetic natures which is goes to how things can be put together because they'll line up in a magnetic field some of them line up this way and some this way so if you think about it as being a slot if if the slots like this they can line up and join but some of them if they're going like that they can't join so that determines the recombinations and that's another complex subject that I've I don't need to get into today. Next, the same thing. Inside a plated sphere, plasmoids growing by direct matter to energy conversion. You're taking energy in, and the plasmoids growing. So it's my, it's ten to the minus twelve here microns, and it's hundred microns here. So it just gives you an idea of the growth and the size. Yeah. So here you have. And that's a little pointless. Just a little graph that has no meaning practically. That's okay. If you have yeah. a drawing, I mean. Okay. Basically, proton electron detection because it's at a zero point. It's a phase point. It's actually proton electron. And what we identify in our culture as a neutron, but I haven't put there just to uh, not to excite anyone. It's simply a fact that carbon has six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Nitrogen is seven protons, seven neutrons, seven electrons. And oxygen eight, 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 eight protons, eight neutrons, eight electrons. So this is a classic way to support trade. Of course, that's not true. It's a very kindergarten way of looking at the elements and just because we haven't had the knowledge to know their geometry because we lost that knowledge because we threw out basically just like burning the books i mean you threw out religion because 
you didn't want spirituality, you just want self-gratification. We'll go on and uh, describe how we can use those characteristics, the transmutation of elements or the re atomic reconstruction. If you take protium and you just take two protium, you use the uh, the plasmoids themselves to split that up into three protons and three free electrons. You use a zero point then to disassemble the carbon and then, a, then on the other side of the zero point you put a frequency imprinting device, which in our case is a different length tube which vibrates a certain frequency, which will dissuade, say, carbon from reforming and persuade I'll mute it again. Just looking at this real quick because I do have it playing pretty fast. I'm like, I should probably just take a moment and look at it. Um, protons and electrons strip from protium atoms. Uh, it's pretty much just the electron stripped, leaving a proton, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Merge with carbon atom. So therefore, you're simply adding these to this carbon and you're creating oxygen. It's actually very simple and very, very appropriate time to end. I can't just say that, dude. This has been denied by science forever. You can't transmute between the elements. We, like, this is denied by science. You can't just be like, oh, you just add a proton and some electrons. You take it, you separate it, and then you add them, and then above, voila. <laughs> I mean, it needs way more explanation than that. I think that. The exciting part of this is that we have the opportunity now to fundamentally change our society. Everything that's used to fear monger at the moment is inconveniently for some people now not a problem. The oil industry doesn't have to worry. Our society doesn't have to worry. No one's fighting over oil in Ukraine anymore. And no one's fighting over oil in Iraq. But the oil... Pretty sure that's not why they're fighting in Ukraine. <laughs> Sad truth. It's still worth money, but, but basically everyone rises on the float, the floats on the rising tide. It's, there's no negatives to this, there's no losses there. We've planned a, a phase transition from hydrocarbon fuels to direct matter to energy conversion. We're putting in a planetary power plant so that people can have free energy, so there's no meter between new and petrol, there's no meter between new and electrical power, there's no meter between new and fresh water, there's no meter between new and... Uh, this part all just sounds nice, like this is the objective of anyone is like looking at our problems and being like, we need to do something when batteries aren't going to cut it. Obviously, our current technology is inadequate. We need new technology. So like these things he's saying is just what someone would con conclude, but it doesn't mean that they would figure out how to do it. It's what, so it's not really... <laughs> But with that increase wealth, it's a new industrial revolution. Everyone will be enormously wealthy. The rich are going to be hugely rich. It doesn't matter. The poor can now eat. And the myth that we need to exterminate 7.5 billion. If what he's saying is true at that point, he should be able to just start up selling energy to somewhere. Like there's places that buy your electricity. He should be able to just produce electricity, sell it earn enough money to buy more things, to produce more electricity to sell it, to just like start a company, if you will, under that. Like if he's actually able to produce electricity at a less cost than the investment, then like there does, shouldn't need to be this big like ordeal around it it should just be like boom check it out brah like we make him bang now <laughs> to make room for the elite uh, 500 million with their bunkers that survive the holocaust then that's not going to happen not on my watch and not on your watch basically i'm calling on the 144,000 enlightened ones to get out there let's get this uh, technology implemented let's transition it in a structured way for the benefit of mankind and ensures when we leave the planet we live in a better condition as when we came and i think that within a generation we can uh, essentially uh, repair all the damage that's been done increases everyone's lifespan and we can double or triple or 10 times the uh, uh, there's plenty of space on the planet i mean australia's just fundamentally empty for a start and uh, if you have this 
feel like these are dangerous words. Just because, like, it's given hope. I mean, maybe he feels that he's able to. I guess we'll see. Pump or whatever, and pump, in fact, use the water itself to pump itself. So you, know, you have a different dynamic. You know, see on the website we have a, a device, an energy device, a direct mounted energy drive, which means we can go very quickly to any other planet or any other galaxy. So I think this is age and enlightenment. We can look outwards towards what we can do, not inwards, you know, towards the problems and what we can't do. That transition is necessary. I think it's timely. And I think if you look at the age of enlightenment, uh, which I go back to my diagram. So here is where we are now. We've been through the comet hit us here. We had the autumn here where we, we had remnants of our civilization, past civilization. And then we had the winter where we lost that information. And uh, now we've just got the uh, coming into the, the summer. Uh, sorry, the spring here and the summer. So this is the age of enlightenment before we got bombarded with, before we get bombarded with rocks when we go through the next meteorite stream. But anyways, now it's the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which just means when there's an outpouring of knowledge and think in a biblical term, if we achieve this, a thousand years of peace because everyone can be concentrating on uh, testing out their new uh, spaceships and new boats all running without any petrol. You have a petrol backup. Obviously, we still have the motors. We still have the infrastructure we have now. We'll phase that out over the next five or ten years, and then we'll recycle all their things, even without equipment too, with the, the retrofitting of all the internal combustion engines. We actually can use all the manifolds from those engines, take them off, remold them. Don't even have to mine the, the iron or smelt it. Just remold it into the sacred geometry shapes and affect the uh, well the transformation of the toxic gases into oxygen and also you know, double the efficiency of the motor, but without having to uh, make more materials. And the materials in your current resource life, you can melt them down. Stainless steel, there's all built stainless steel. There are no catalysts here that are exotic. You don't have to have expensive platinum, palladium. There's nothing like that. Just use stainless steel and you can recycle the stainless steel from the existing infrastructure on your car. And as I said again, your uh, manifold, which is basically just cast iron, we just recast into spheres and then you have the technology. So it's a very smooth transition. It's a very simple transition. And then everyone in the world can understand the function and uses of plasmoids from a very base thing of just automotive power up to the, which is on our website, the, uh, the movie of our direct matter to energy device. I think that's a uh, it, and uh, I'll just move down to the next slide and I'll introduce what we're doing next, which is the heart and whistle, which is section 13, which is based on the Sanskrit, and my Indian viewers will love this, based on the Sanskrit. I've been looking forward to this one, honestly, just because it's Shiva Lingam. I almost jumped ahead, but... And Shiva Lingam, which is actually really fascinating that, that an icon or some shape can actually accurately uh, send information through thousands of years, the same as a pyramid did, that you cannot lose that information if it's a sacred object, and it actually, the whole thing about squaring the circle and the ether to matter, which we just described as real, and we can give you all the numbers and the relationship of numbers is beyond statistical. I mean, I did statistics at a university, and I can tell you it's not improbable, it's statistically impossible to have all those coincidences. It's just not, not random. And I look forward to our discussion on that. Thank you. Okay, let me... See if I can find Giranar. This is a Shiva Lingam said to have emerged of its own volition in Bavnath. Bavnath, yeah. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but sound probably Bavnath. at the base of Mount Gurnar. Mount Gurnar. So cool. I don't know whose picture this is, sorry. Flicker, Pavange. Probably that one. Pavange. Okay. Um, but Shiva Lingam, if I can find maybe here. This one, Joganya Hills Cave. This thing is incredible because the wall surrounding it, like the shape here, this thing was made by current flows. This ain't no man-made thing. Maybe this was added, I don't even know. It's hard to say because this wall was shaped by an eddy that like created a wave over here like these are probably all actually current flows this thing's incredible sorry i don't know whose video this is anymore but it's from this place in girt 
the most literally holy place on Earth, perhaps. Although the whole part of me is rude. Whole Earth is equal, I guess. It's probably biased of me in the end. Alright, I'll be back for the next one. Peace.